Hi guys, Versus Education here with the 21st video of the Unreal Development Kit Beginner Series. And in this video, we're going to be going over water creation inside of UDK, utilizing some of the different things that we've learned in the past few uh, videos. So let's just start off by showing you some of the water inside of UDK, and uh, just exactly explaining what we're going to be doing uh, throughout this tutorial. So if you take a quick look at my scene here, you can see I've got something which somewhat resembles water. I've essentially got an animation material on a mesh here. Uh, it's not a normal mesh, it's a fluid surface actor. Having said that, I'll show you how to make fluid surface actors inside of UDK, allowing you to apply materials to them, have uh, a, a physics, so for example when you shoot it, it will, uh, it will change based on impulse. I'll also be going over water volumes in UDK, and in addition, I will also be going over post-processing for the water effects. So you can see here, if I quickly fly inside of my water, I get a sort of greeny, blurry water effect that, uh, you know, usually comes accustomed to, uh, you know, being inside of UDK. So I'm going to quickly open up my uh, water test level here, just so I can show you uh, a bigger plane of water, uh, and uh, pretty much give you a quick outline as to uh, what kind of builds up my water inside of UDK and what I'm going to be teaching you. So I'm just going to quickly select it here. And here we go, you can see I've essentially just got some BSP here, a uh, fluid surface actor uh, with the water and stuff, however that isn't it. So, first thing you can notice here is obviously you've got the, uh, the water. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and select that quickly. And you can see, after clicking this, you can see it's actually a fluid surface actor and we've got a whole bunch of different properties for this that we can play around with to adjust the water. We also have post-processing volume to give that effect and we also have another volume for the uh, water which is uh, which allows us to swim uh, inside of that water to have that sort of somewhat gravityless uh, feel. So I'm just going to quickly give you a brief example of this. Also I do want to give, uh, I also do want to put a quick disclaimer out there for my voice um, I'm kind of losing my voice because, uh, I know, I'm tired and a little ill at the moment. But anyway, you can see when we go inside of this water, we get that depth of field, you know, the sort of blurriness. We can swim in it, you know, we can go up, we can do go down, and it's not necessarily just the normal jumping and so on. So, let's begin with showing you how to create this. So, obviously, first of all, you're going to need to make sure you have... Uh, wherever you want to place your water. Seeing as I've already got my water in my level, I'm not going to be redoing it. I'm going to be putting it into a quick test level to uh, better show it off. So you can see I've just got some pretty much, uh, pretty much got some very basic BSP here to keep my water in. It somewhat resembles a pool with a little gap in between to show you can actually swim between it and so on. So let's start off by adding the first thing, which is the fluid surface actor. So to do that, just go ahead, go to the content browser, go to the actor classes tab, select fluid, and then just grab the fluid surface actor text here and drag it. Do not expand it and get the movable thing. That's uh, yeah, you don't really want to be using that. Just get the standard fluid surface actor. So once you have that in your scene, you can move it about, drag it, whatever you want to do. So just kind of place this wherever you want the uh, top of your water to be, and then just scale it accordingly. So I'm going to make it a little bit longer this way to fill up the entire pool, and I'm also going to bring it up just a little bit like that. So if I press play, you can actually see exactly what this fluid sa uh, surface actor is and what it does. So I'm just going to quickly build my lighting so it isn't all black as it is now. Don't worry, this shouldn't take a while, but once it's done, you'll see when I shoot it, it will begin uh, changing itself based on the impulse, as if like it's actually got real-time physics applied to it, which is pretty cool. And uh, I'll also be showing you how to adjust some of these values. So, if I go ahead and press play now, and shoot it, you can see you, got the, you get those ripples that you would see in normal water as you shoot it, and so on. And also, if you jump into it, you get a little splash, but you can't see it as I fall pretty much straight down into it. Anyway, that is our water. But now what we need to do is go ahead and uh, apply a water material to it. So keep in mind, I'm not necessarily going to be showing you how to make a water material in this video. I'm going to be showing you how to use a preset one. However, based on the tutorials that I showed you previously, you should be able to create something real basic and simple. So I'm just going to choose all the materials here and I'm going to type in uh, water. So, 
what my water material is is it's essentially going to be uh think of it this way the water is going to be like um a texture with some panners and uh, an alpha to give it that somewhat transparent look so if i go down to one of the water materials like uh I'm trying to find it like this one here this is animated and this looks as if it's just a panner it's just moving pretty much straight down uh, very basic stuff to be honest and that's kind of how you uh, make the water inside of UDK obviously you can do in you know, the more advanced stuff with things like flow maps and so on but uh, for now you know all we're going to be doing is uh, using a preset so you can actually get a hang of uh, water creation inside of UDK so for now I'm not necessarily going to be using uh, a completely transparent piece of water like this which doesn't look too great I'm going to be using this nice lovely uh, slimy goo stuff actually no, no never mind that looks terrible I'm just going to go ahead and uh, select the material up here m underscore fluid actor underscore water put it on and it looks pretty cool so if I shoot this now it's actually going to uh, be pretty realistic it looks right however it doesn't necessarily work completely like water. We need a few more things to actually finish this off. So the next thing we're going to do is play around with some of the fluid surface actor properties to um Sorry, one moment. Yeah, we're going to be playing around with some of these fluid surf uh, surface actor properties to uh you know get the right look and feel that we that we want to get out of this. So first of all, just go down to uh fluid component and then go down to fluid and we got all of our properties here. So first of all, I'm just gonna quickly drag this out and the most important simulation uh sorry, the most important property is enable simulation. If you turn it off, it won't have the physics applied to it, whereas if you turn it on it will have that nice physics effect. And we can also play around with some of the things like the tessellation, we can play around like uh play around with things like the scaling. Um you can play around with uh the resolution and stuff and uh even the mesh. However you don't really want to be uh however to actually change that I believe if you do uh, actually have to uh, change it in the UC code but uh, for now just the square should be fine play around with some of those settings experiment with it play around the tessellation uh, you know the the physics and so on I'm not, necessarily going, I'm not necessarily going to be showing you how to use them seeing as there's tons and uh, you know by default it works pretty well but uh, you might want to have to adjust it if you if you let's say want to have a bigger plane of water or something like that so the next thing we're going to be going over is creating the water volume so we can actually swim inside of the water and have that somewhat gravityless feel because at the moment if I go in here it's just like we're walking in a normal level. So let's just go ahead and uh, get our BSP volume to make the material, uh, sorry, to make the volume. So we're doing this just the same way we would with anything else really uh, where we got to choose a certain area and then apply that volume to it. So I'm just going to actually add my volume here, right where my water is. It just aligns those pretty closely. It's not 100% perfect, but uh, I like a little bit of leeway. So I'm going to add in my volume here. So make sure you select the entire area of where your water is. So if it's underneath, don't just make it a plane. It's got to have the whole depth and uh, pretty much cover all of the area where your water is going to be. So having done that, just go ahead, right click on volumes, and then go all the way down and add UT water volume and it will have been added so if I actually press play now if I go in you should be able to hear a somewhat splashy sound and uh, we don't fall as fast we can essentially swim which is pretty cool and uh, yeah you can play around with some of the settings of the water for example you can play around with things like uh, let's have a look quickly I'm just gonna move this out of the way just a little bit so I can select my water volume and uh, show you some of the properties. So, what do we got here? So, some of the first ones are entry sounds. So, you can play around with the sounds uh, like the splash when you first initially enter the water. You can play around with the exit sound. Um, there isn't too much. You can play around with the, f the physics volume. So, you can play around with things like the velocity, like uh, how fast you move, uh, damage per second if you want to have damage. So, let's say you're drowning or something like that. Ground fiction, terminal velocity. I'm not going to explain those. I know what they are, but. Uh, I'm not going to go super maths geek on your ass right now, just play around with it. Most of it's pretty self-explanatory if you've done any uh, uh, physics, maths, and stuff like that before. 
So, that's pretty much everything for the water volume for now. No matter how big it is, it should work pretty much by default pretty well. So the last thing we're actually going to be using for our water is a post-processing volume. So, as I showed you in the previous video, this sort of gives you that, uh, that coloring effect inside of the water. To make this realistic, we're going to be using some blur in the form of depth of field. We're going to get some bloom, and uh, we're also going to give it some uh, color grading to give it a sort of bluey green feel that you usually see when you're underwater. So, let's just go ahead and uh, go to volumes, right-click it, and select post-process volume. So I'm going to move this out of the way now, and I'm going to select my post-processing volume. I like to uh, use the viewports here because there isn't much space and you don't want to be leaving too much space otherwise it's going to be really inconsistent and uh, you might have the post processing volume outside of the water so just make sure it's only the area with the water so let's start off by enabling depth of field you won't see anything at the moment until we actually uh, turn up the values so first of all let's uh, go ahead and turn up the depth of field so I'm going to give this uh, something like a 50 blur Oops, it might be a little too much, and I'm also going to change the distance. So when you're underwater, it blurs really, really close to your face. So I'm going to set this to something like 50, nope, 250. There we go, yeah, seems about right for water. It, you can see things close to you very clearly in water, but things that are far away or just anywhere not close to you, you can't say it's all blurry. So that's the sort of effect we're going for here. And I'm also going to be turning up the bloom here, because underwater you kind of get that sort of bloomy, blurry effect, which you can see here, and the sort of flickering and stuff. I did explain bloom and depth of field in my uh, post-processing videos. It may be worth checking that out if you're not too sure what you're doing. And the last thing we're going to be doing is playing around with the high tones and mid tones to get a sort of... Um, bluey look and feel to it. So remember this is R, G, and B. So I'm going to set this to 1.1. 1 .1. Uh, sorry, no, I'm going to set this to 1. And uh, I'm going to play around with these values until I can actually get the sort of look and feel that we're aiming for. So I'm going to turn this to 0 0.5. It's somewhat blue, but it's not necessarily what we're looking for. So RGB. I'm going to give it a little bit of uh, green too. And there we go. We've got that sort of underwater look going on now. You can turn turn this up, down, or whatever, and just sort of play around with the values however much you want. It's kind of up to personal preference, really, and uh, the style of your game. This might be a little too much, uh, but uh, just play around with it and uh, see what you can do. So thanks for watching, comment, like and subscribe and don't forget to check out the next